Well, good afternoon. This is section 5.1, rounding fractions and mixed numbers. So what I want you to do first is to go ahead and copy this information down, and then we'll discuss it. Well, all right, you are, again, rounding to the nearest half. That is what the question is today, is rounding each number to the nearest half. So it's going to round to a zero, one half, or one whole, which would be the next number on a mixed number. Okay. So rounding up, this is if the numerator is almost as large as the denominator. Round the number up to the next whole number. So if we have, for example, seven eighths, when we compare the numerator to the denominator, they're nearly the same. Okay. This again, meaning that we have a total of eight slices of pizza to make it one whole, and we have seven remaining. So nearly the entire pizza is still, um, still present, still there. So that's going to round to one. Now if we had a mixed number, two and eight ninths, again we have nine slices of pizza, there are a total of eight remaining, therefore this rounds to three. Since this is um, standing for one hole, okay, this is representing two holes that are already there. So it's basically two pizzas, and then the third one has, and I'm going to do this in short, has one piece removed. The eight others are remaining. So we have one, two, almost total of three. Okay. Now when we round to the um, nearest half, or round to a half, it means that the numerator is about half of the denominator. Round the fraction then to one half. So four out of ten. Well, half of ten is five. So if we were looking at a fraction that is equal to one half, it would be five tenths. Four is almost half of ten. So then we're going to round this number to one half. So in this situation where we have a mixed number, 2 and 3 eighths, again, half of 8 is 4, so 4 eighths. And again, the 3 is real close to the 4. It's close to exactly 1 half. So then this is going to round. The 2 is going to stay the same. The fraction itself will be 1 half. Now when we round down, that is if the numerator is much smaller than the denominator round the number to the previous whole number if we're talking about mixed numbers. So for a um, just a plain fraction, a uh, proper fraction, one-fifth, again this number is nearly zero. There's only one slice remaining out of a possible five. So that means that there's it's almost completely gone. So then it rounds to zero. And for this one, 2 and 2 thirteenths. Again, we have 13 slices. There's only two remaining. And you say, well, twos, um, you know, when we compare it to some of these other numbers, like three, they're close to that. But you got to, again, compare it to the new, to the denominator on how many slices there are. Okay. Um, one way of doing that as well is, is looking at the halfway point of 13 and half of 13 would be six and a half, six point five, and two is much closer to zero on that number line than six and a half. So that's another way of looking at this as well. But it rounds to two since this is basically rounds to nothing to zero. Um, that's representing zero. So this number two is just going to simply stay the same. Now there's lots of different ways to look at this. Um, and manipulate numbers. Um, we'll be talking about a lot of these in class and we'll also be using some manipulatives to help understand it as well. So let's look at our first question and it is a mixed number and again they are asking you to round to the nearest half is what the directions say. So when they say nearest half they're talking about zero half or whole or in this case since it is um, a mixed number, you're rounding to eight, eight and a half, or nine. Okay. 
So the question is, on a number line, you can look at it in that manner as well, um, where is, if this is my 8, this would be, stand for 8 and a half, and this would stand for 9, where does this 8 and 1 twelfth fall between this line? Well, 6 twelfths would be 1 half, okay? So you can look at it as the 1 looking at this, and since 1 is very close to um, 0, uh, usually any of those that have that situation are going to be closer to 0. Um, so we so 1 out of the 12, and again 6 twelfths is my 1 half mark, so 1 twelfth is going to be uh, right, right here um, when we place it on this number line. Uh, in comparison. So it's real close to my 8 itself. So the answer to this, again, is 8 because this fraction 1 12th is pretty much 0. There's 12 slices, there's only one remaining. So it rounds to 0, which we have to leave the 8 by itself. Let's look at the next one. 5 ninths. Go ahead and hit pause and tell me what this rounds to. Well, since this is 5 ninths, and if we want to look at the halfway mark, um, half of 9 would be 4.5 over 9. And as you can see, 5 is very, very close to 4 and a half, so therefore my answer is 1 half. And again, my options were 0, 1 half, or 1 whole in this case because it's just a proper fraction. Always compare to that denominator. So let's look at the next one. Go ahead and hit pause and solve this. So again we have 4, 4 and 1 half, or 5 are my choices. And half of 7 would be 3.5 over 7. That would equal exactly 1 half. That's half of my 7. And 3 is very close to this. Um, if I were looking at this, it would be 4 and 0 sevenths compared to 4 and 7 sevenths if I'm looking at the comparisons to these three numbers above. And the 3 is much closer to 3 and a half than it is 0. So therefore, this is going to round to my half of 4 and 1 half. Let's look at our next one. 2 and 9 tenths. Go ahead and hit pause and solve this. So again, my options are 2, 2.5, or 3. And half, uh, if I want to use my number line again, um, 2 and 0 tenths would be 2. My halfway point would be 2, and half of 10 is 5. And my um, fraction over here would be 10 tenths equal 1, which gives me 3. So the question is, 9 tenths, is 9 closer to uh, 10, 5, or 0? And it is closer to my um, 10 tenths, because again, 10 slices of pizza, 9 of them are remaining, it's nearly one whole pizza, so then we would add that 1 onto the 3, to, or excuse me, onto the 2, to get 3, so 3 would be my answer. Let's look at our next one. I'll let you go ahead and hit pause and solve this. So when we look at this, we have 4 and 3 fourths, so it's going to be 4, 4 and a half, or 5. So if I use the number line again, I can say 4 and 0 fourths. Um, the halfway point would be 4, and half of 4 is 2, so 2 fourths and 4 and 4 fourths. Now when you look at these 2 and 4, this lies exactly halfway between that is 3 fourths. So some of you are saying, well which way do I go? Well always remember if it's halfway or more and you say, well it isn't halfway, well it's halfway between this and this that we're trying to determine to go to, whether it's going to be 4, 4 and a half, or 5. And if it's always half, you always round up. OK, 
okay? Just like when we have our typical rounding rules of five or more, um, add one more, you add one more to it because five is halfway between 10 uh, and the zero. So uh, five or more, add one more, or halfway, um, you always add one more to it. So this case, we would round it to five. Now, if you rounded it to four and a half, I'm not going to say that it's wrong either. Um, but usually we like to stick with some of those typical rules that we use for rounding, which would make it round up to the five. Okay. If you have any questions on this, please make note of that. Again, we will talk about this further tomorrow. And uh, we'll use some manipulatives as well to hopefully have a little better visual understanding of this as well. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.